Welcome back to Switch to Linux. And we are back in a nice outdoor environment. I know we don't usually do a couple of those in a row, but I have been traveling a little bit and uh, I don't have real good internet where, where I am. So what I was going to do needed more internet. So a little commentary. There's an interesting article from It's Foss on Elementary OS titled, What Happened to Elementary OS? I'll leave the article down in the description. But what this article looks at is, you know, elementary OS, if you've noticed, has been a little bit slow and also not as popular. And I think the popularity of it waned out of the original excitement of here's this new Ubuntu based distribution and it is promising a lot of neat things. Mostly they took a lot of their um, their inspiration from Mac. So if you really like Mac and you're looking for Linux, Elementary OS is one of your better options to go to. Now, that being said, I've always been highly critical of the distribution on, to be very clear, on the technical level of the distribution. Um, I don't follow the lives of individual developers, but um, the even though, you know, the one of the last videos I did on Elementary OS is when somebody's trying to bait me into saying something evil or bad. I'm like, I don't care, you know. Uh, but I want to look at it, and historically, the issue I've always had with Elementary OS has been on a technical front. They have departed from a lot of the Linux view of this is my computer, I wanna do with it what I want. The first earlier editions had tweaks apps that you could go in and adjust some things the operating system did not really let you do. And with every iteration of the distribution, they have broken those tweak apps and eventually people are like, I'm done, I don't care anymore probably moved on to other distributions. But they've also had issues where they were one of the first ones to pull out the ability to install .deb packages, as I recall, and you had to um, just reinstall features. You, you could, of course, do it through the terminal, but you had to uh, reinstall that feature if you wanted to do that from the GUI. And then they made this weird move where they basically say every app that's not curated directly by their team is potentially insecure. And understand, number one, they have very few apps curated by their team. They have nothing in productivity. They have nothing, I, I, I'm just trying to remember the categories of applications. There is almost nothing. There is a default music player, a default video player, and the email application I think they're calling safe, and a web browser, and everything else you would install. And if it came from the repository, if it came from the Flatpak repository, no matter where it would come from, it'd be like, this is potentially insecure. And they give you these warnings that made it very shaky. And I didn't like that element because they're calling applications with a long positive track record in the FOSS community like GIMP and LibreOffice, they were calling those potentially dangerous because they weren't curated directly by the elementary OS team. However, they're, they're still doing that at the last iteration while at the same time, the only thing in their store is flat packs now. That is one of the upcoming changes. So I hope that that is the best thing that they need to do to make their distribution at least decent is pull out those warnings. If you're going to rely on Flatpak, you must trust them. Now, you have to understand that since 7 came out in the upcoming 8, which is just about to release a release candidate, it's still daily build mode. You can download the daily build. Of course, it's like pre-alpha, so be very careful doing that. Don't criticize that distribution. There's probably a lot of bugs in there they are still working on. But in the upcoming edition, everything is flat pack. Now between seven, when they released it, and eight, flat pack has since gone through a change where they are they have verified and the unverified batch. Now, to be clear, most people think that their system is extremely short-sighted, flat pack system. And I, I think the developers like it, but there's been wide criticism from a lot of people in the Linux world because it basically dealt with, you get a verified check mark if you are the person who created the software and created the flat pack. If you did not create the software, but you upload the flat pack, you are an unverified, which means Google Chrome 
is unverified and I think it was uploaded. I forget exactly who uploaded it. I think it's my, it's a Google developer. It's not some weird third party person. It's somebody tied directly in with Google, but Google itself isn't doing the Flatpak uploads. So Google Chrome is unverified in Flatpak. Now, I'm not a fan of Google Chrome. I wouldn't use Google Chrome. I think it's spyware, but if Google Chrome is put up there by a Google Chrome developer, but he's not the Google Chrome developer, according to GitHub or whatever else, wherever they're storing the code for that, well, in that case, it's listed as unverified. We also have the problem that I could be the Chinese hacker that is creating the code and throwing it in the flat pack, but since I'm the guy that created it, it's verified. You see, there are serious issues with their method but their method, at least it's a start, maybe we can have a better discussion. So if the upcoming elementary OS 8 is, their software store is almost entirely flat packs, if not entirely flat packs, according to the article here that I'm reading. And in this article, they talk about the, the fact that uh, now the, a lot of your default apps are flat packs instead of snaps. So you, in theory, should be able to remove Snap entirely from the system. I haven't seen the seen it yet. I'll look at it when it's uh, either a beta or um, when it's ultimately released. Uh, but in this, the the uh, App Center is now Flatpak only. I hope that they are going to be relying on the new system, which will give us a better thing because GIMP will be listed as a verified Flatpak. LibreOffice will be listed as a verified flat pack. And as long as they drop that big old warning saying this could potentially be malware off of LibreOffice and GIMP, they are doing a very good positive thing. Again, I haven't seen it, so it's interesting. So if you're still in that pre-release phase, guys, please get rid of that stupid thing. That has been my biggest criticism from elementary OS for years. Stop calling well-respected software potential malware. Especially if you're trying to get new users onto Linux because they go to do this and then they're like, oh, there's no way to do Office documents. And every single Office suite has this scary warning on it that I understand as a Linux user, but a new user may not understand. And that really is part of the problem. So hopefully they re, uh, fix that particular issue. So here's the other expected changes. Instead of the App Center managing the system updates, those have been moved over to the system uh, system uh, app. I think that that's a good thing. Uh, Linux Mint, they have a separate app store and update manager. So I like that general approach. Um, of course, anything based on GNOME, the GNOME Software Center will use the updates and the software at the same time. I don't think that makes a difference one way or the other, uh, but just be aware of that little change. They're giving us uh, some new toggle options for easy access to the screen reader, on-screen keyboard, font size, and other system settings. So basically, Elementary OS, it sounds like they're making a, a very positive step towards accessibility models. So that's actually good because that is actually one of the criticisms of Linux is there is not as much... Uh, there's not as much accessibility out there uh, in the Linux world as there probably should be. And if they're making some positive inroads, that's good. They are actually supporting WireGuard VPN support now out of the box. That's actually good and that's actually very good. Hopefully they still support the OpenVPN protocol as well. I assume they probably will. But for a distribution to say, hey, we're going to support WireGuard as well. WireGuard is a new, many people looking at it considered better than OpenVPN. It's certainly leaner and faster as a protocol. So that's actually really good to get a distribution that supports that out of the box. The other major changes that the article says we are expecting to see, uh, the doc, they're, uh, they're not dropping X support. So this is good for people that still want to use X and have apps relying on X. They still have X support. And, but they will also have Wayland support. I'm not sure what their default is going to be, probably Wayland if I have my guess, but you can go back to the X version and they're working on Doc to have compatibility for 
for X and for Wayland desktop sessions. So there is a lot of uh, a lot of good good systems involved here, and uh, it does sound like it's going to be a neat upcoming distribution. So we'll keep an eye on it. Now, why did Elementary OS development slow down quite a bit? Why did they have a, a lackluster release with the seven? Well, a lot of this has to do with some uh, disagreements with the original co-founders back in 2022. And so there were two original co-founders for the project and they had a disagreement and effectively the project would have collapsed except Danielle took up the, the mantle of this and then carried forth with the development to keep the project alive. And so with that down to one developer, and I think they went from a team of three people down to just Danielle initially. I'm not sure if they've added more people to the team or not, uh, at least making key decisions. But in light of all of that, there was obviously a slowdown when you lose two thirds of your team on your project. They all went off their own ways. Danielle kept the project going, but it does look like uh, with Elementary OS 8, we are gonna see some changes. I am really excited to see, are they going to accept the new flat pack security model, which if they do, this is gonna be a huge step. Even though I disagree with portions of the model, like many people do, it's way better than they have done in the past. So Elementary OS team, please get rid of that stupid warning that is warning people about installing potentially dangerous packages like LibreOffice and GIMP. That's the one thing you need to do to have a decent distribution. Now, I'm not gonna be a user one way or the other. Uh, obviously, as I said at the start of the video, it's very much based on Mac. I don't like the Mac UI. That's primarily why I'm not a user of it, but it is a very beautiful and streamlined system if you like that particular layout. So if you are a Mac user and you're like, you know, I really want to switch to Linux, I will absolutely encourage you, check out Elementary OS. It does have that Mac feel to it. And I think that you will very well find your home in that particular distribution. So I'm curious to see what uh, Elementary OS 8 is going to look like. I will have a look at it as soon as I said there's either a beta for it. I'm not going to do the release candidate. I'll do either the beta or I'll do the actual release depending on uh, when it comes out in the scheduling. Of course, it is based on Ubuntu 24.04, so that's to be expected. And then, you know, we'll see what else it has to offer when we get more information, when we move out of the daily build mode. So that is what Elementary OS needs to do to succeed. Let me know your thoughts about Elementary OS for the positive or for the negative in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more, and we will see you next time.